In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Galaxy 32 audio interface by Antelope Audio. And after going through many different audio interface iterations, using a ton of different audio interfaces, I wanna share why I think this one is the ultimate audio interface for people who need to do everything well and fast. Okay, now let me get specific about what I personally needed. All of the boxes that I needed to check in my workflow that this checks and like way more. In my studio, we're not just doing right, but we're also doing a lot of production. Now as things are being produced here in the studio, we're gonna be doing a lot of recording with microphones on instruments. Some things are gonna be direct line in. Sometimes it's gonna be simultaneous. Sometimes it's gonna be overdubs. And the name of the game here in this studio and in music in general, I think, is creativity. And as we all may have learned at this point, creativity can be fleeting. So if you have an idea, you hear a sound, you wanna lay down a part, this stuff can't get in the way. You wanna be able to hear it and grab it as fast as you can. So for instance, in this room, on top of actually getting the sounds for the finished recording and mix, it's also a creative space. So I wanna be able to touch things and hear and use things without having to, okay, where's the mic? Do I have to plug things in? I wanna be able to touch it. And one, have it routed where I want it to go to hit the actual on the preamps that I like through the chain that I like. So it's record ready, but also be able to just explore sounds and find, you know, the inspiration that we're looking for and have it come through the speakers, which you can do on a lot of interfaces, but the routing for this allows me to do it everywhere and have it with no latency so I can immediately do my monitoring. I shouldn't get a copyright, right? Same concept wherever I go. So if we come over here to guitars, it's the same thing. I have the guitars routed through the Galaxy with all of my amps set up. Just literally pick an amp. Hear my guitar through the speakers, no DAW open. Same premise as the synths. I can play guitar. I can hear it if we're writing. I don't have to set anything up on the computer. Literally don't even have to have the computer on. The Galaxy actually works in standalone mode. So my computer could literally be off and I could still. <laughs> write a song and find sounds without the computer being involved at all. Same thing goes for drums. I can move over to the drum set, sit down, put headphones on. Obviously I can't have the drum mics come out of my speakers. So I've controlled it in the routing so that all of the drum mics hit my outboard prees and the compressors that I wanna use on the way in and they go straight to the headphones. So I can sit at the drums, hear my drums as well as everything else in the studio. And me and other players or writers can actually write music and play without the friction of having to. Is that plugged in? Do we need to patch that? Can we move this? There's none of that. It's all just ready to go. Simultaneously, because of the insane amount of I.O. on the Galaxy, I have all of my other outboard gear set up as hardware inserts. Okay, so the way that all of this works so you can do direct monitoring with no latency is through their software called Control Panel, which I'll get to a little bit later in this video, but I have all these little digital mixers set up so I can actually monitor things via the speakers or headphone setups, depending on which player you are, you have your own mixer. So again, we'll come back to this a little bit later in the video. After it's recording and it's playing back, that sound that's playing back, I want that to be as close to the finish line as possible. And like me, I'm sure some of you also do this, which is mix as you go throughout the project. Since the stuff we're producing is all generally done here in this studio, I am using a lot of analog outboard gear as hardware inserts on my mixes and productions. So even though I'm not in mix mode per se, I am always mixing as we're going. As the production and song are coming along, the mix is also coming to life, but we may not actually be done recording. We may still overdub a part, we may change a part. So I need the interface to be able to work with me and not against me in this process, which means a couple things. I need to have the ability to have nearly no latency 
when recording or overdubbing, even to the song that's partially mixed, which means there may be a lot of plugins, there may be hardware inserts, delay compensation going on. I need to still be able to jump in and track something with no latency to that project. Also because the design of the studio is to have everything set up at any given time to be able to use, I need a lot of inputs to be able to record, but I also need more inputs for the hardware inserts to be able to use on the mix. And I need them to all be available simultaneously. Now this is the point where the rub starts to happen between several of the higher end audio interfaces. And then once everything is tracked, all the overdubs are finished, that finished mix is 90% of the way there, if not more than that, and does not require any complicated changeover or patching or switching of anything, which is fantastic. That is what I mean by doing everything. So this Galaxy 32 audio interface is able to serve all of those needs that I just mentioned, as well as including 32 channels of analog inputs and outputs, 64 Dante IO, 64 MADI IO, 64 Pro Tools HDX IO at 192 kilobytes per second, eight channels of ADAT IO, two channels of SPDIF IO, two monitor outs, Atmos and surround routing, room tuning capabilities, synergy core effects platform, virtual patch bay onboard, low latency mixers, direct monitoring, standalone operation, simultaneous use of all direct inputs, as well as customizable presets. It's a lot. So with that being said, I could make this video four hours long and go through every single detail, but I'm gonna be selfish and just share the things that I personally care about and get value from in my workflow. So as I just mentioned, there are a lot of possible inputs and outputs on this interface. And I think it's worth just circling back and reminding you that this is one single rack space that includes all of those inputs and outputs. Pretty remarkable. Also worth mentioning, this is a Thunderbolt 3 interface. So you've got your power supply and then Thunderbolt 3. This is probably useful in having the low latency direct monitoring. I think that transfer speed helps. I'm not a rocket scientist or anything. However, I will say there is no headphone output on this interface. Somebody made a decision at some point and said, let's not put it on there. But if you get the Galaxy 64, which essentially is the same thing, but with double the analog IO on it, that one does have a headphone jack. So previously I had used the Apollo system and like the Galaxy, that also has monitor left and right outputs on it, separate from your analog DB25 connections. However, something that bothered me is in the actual routing matrix of it, the monitor left and right chewed up your analog IO in your DAW inputs and outputs. And that was just very confusing. So you couldn't like one and two, you either couldn't use them. It was just messed up. So on the Galaxy, what happens is you just have DAW inputs and outputs one through 64. So inside of Pro Tools or Logic, whatever you have, it just sees Galaxy 32 inputs one through 64. Now what's cool is obviously you have all of these insane potential inputs that you can connect to your interface simultaneously, by the way, you can have them all hooked up simultaneously. And then inside of the software that comes with the interface, which is called Control Panel, it allows you an insane amount of flexibility to control this routing for all the inputs and outputs. And you can just pick and choose which connections you want to go to your DAW. Probably just worth making a separate video dedicating the whole thing to diving into that and explaining how to just simplify the use case of it. So we'll do that in another video. And let me know down in the comments if you wanna see a video on that. Another cool feature of the control panel is that it has four 32 channel digital mixers. This is one of the many reasons that I personally love this unit. So what I do is I have a separate mixer set up for the live drummer, one for the vocalist, one for another musician, whatever they may be using at the time, and then one set up for the control room. Now all these mixers are essentially allowing direct monitoring, input monitoring with no latency. So the, if I go sit at the drums and I put my headphones on, I could just hear the drums with a nice mix that's set up going to my headphone mixer. I'm still using all of my outboard pre's analog gear on the front end, but I don't actually have to touch the computer to hear it. I don't have to touch Pro Tools, open a DAW or anything. I just put my headphones on, 
and I can hear it. It's always there. Same thing for the vocalist. They get their own mix. Same thing for whoever else might be playing acoustic guitar or something. And then same thing for the control room. I have input monitoring, let's say for my guitar rig, which is going to Oxbox or synths and keys, anything bass DI. That's its own mixer that's live through the speakers if I want to hear it through the speakers. And again, the value from these mixers is just having the ability to sit down and record and hear yourself directly with no latency while you record. On the control panel, you can also utilize their AFX plugins, which are essentially their version of DSP plugins, handling the onboard processing of them, which can obviously make the tracking experience a lot more fun. This is another interesting feature that they go above and beyond on, and I'm not gonna dive too deep in because I do think it kind of deserves its own thing. I wanna keep this video as focused as possible, but I do think that is worth at least mentioning that they have their own line of AFX plugins that you can use either live in real-time monitoring or when mixing. Now the interface also has Atmos or surround sound compatibility as well as room tuning compatibility, which are two very useful things to a ton of different users, not particularly to me, so I will not be taking advantage of them, but just one of the very long list of things that are built into this interface and come with it. And as I mentioned before, I have no plans on utilizing these features, but those are certainly gonna be useful to anyone who's trying to get into the Atmos mixing situation or having a surround setup or needs to do room tuning with the speakers. So it's now been just over a month that I've had this unit in my studio and I've been using it. I have used it on probably 10, 12 different sessions. I actually switched over to this interface literally the night before a tracking session, which had me a bit nervous, but I do think that in times of pressure, you tend to learn a lot about the points of friction and whether something works well or not. And with that being said, I was able to switch everything over, get all the new headphone mixers set up, learn the control panel routing, the ADAT routing to the headphone setup, get it all prepped and ready before the session and went smoothly. And since then I've done some mixing and a lot of production with it and the workflow has been absolutely perfect for me. I've been telling a lot of my friends about it and also I do these consultations with some people who watch the channels and who are setting up their studios and I have just been saying the same same thing over and over to everyone that I talk to, but it's been really, really powerful and a nice change of pace to be able to do all of the little tiny detailed things that I want to do in my studio at the same time without having to change anything. And that's just kind of miraculous that the technology is there to be able to do that. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up on this and give my consensus, it's been great. I have been over the moon with the ability to do so many different picky and specific things, but once it's set up how I want it to be, I don't have to like come back to it and move things around or change stuff. It's almost like out of sight, out of mind. Once the routing is routed to the headphone box of where I need it to be, my monitor controller, how I need it to be, like I don't actually have to think about it that much unless I want to change like a particular mix level or something like that, which doesn't happen that often. It's been really, really nice. And I've actually expanded my inputs and outputs, which I'm gonna also talk about in another video, using the MADI inputs and outputs, which has allowed me to have 64 channels of analog inputs and outputs using the Galaxy 32. So again, you have 64 channels of MADI. So now, well, I guess it's 32 analog IO to the Galaxy and then 32 analog IO via MADI to, oh, it's, it's a whole thing. I have a total of 64 inputs and outputs, which I can customize and use for recording and then for hardware inserts that are just permanently in those inputs and outputs, which is so awesomely overkill and just glorious. It's been a lot of fun. This video, I guess, is just kind of like an ad for like 25 other videos that I'm gonna make. If you wanna have me break down how I'm routing my stuff and how I'm able to do the hybrid mix thing with the hardware inserts and utilize all this, let me know down in the comments. I'm probably gonna make a video on that. I just wanted to kind of share my experience with switching to this because it's, it's a big switch. Switching interfaces is like a big thing. There's a lot of parts to it and uh, software and hardware and features and connectivity. And this one, 
I didn't know that much about until my friend Fady Gurgis told me about it. I'll link his YouTube channel. We spent some time on the phone really going through it and he did a great job of just telling me how it does all of the things that I want it to do essentially without going to Pro Tools HD. Even though it has the capability of doing Pro Tools HDX, I don't need it with this interface. So it's been really, really nice. I'll put a bunch of the links to all the stuff down in the description. If you're interested in checking out this Galaxy 32, I actually have a discount code you can use to get 10% off, which brings me to the price. The price of this is $59.95. If you buy it directly from Antelope Audio, if you use my code, you can get 10% off, which is just a great way to save yourself some money and support my channel by using that code at your checkout. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. And even better yet, Antelope Audio has their own Discord server. I'll put a link to their Discord down there as well. This is something that I think is super unique. You don't see companies do this. They have their own Discord server where you can get on and you can basically have direct access to other users as well as their team. So if you have any questions about features, any bugs or anything that you think may be going on, that it's like instant feedback, instant communication. See like if there's firmware updates or any, just to stay totally in the loop, check out the Discord, you can jump on there. It is super valuable. And I think it's really awesome that they made something like this for their users. So go check that out. Check out the discount code down in the description. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more of this. Stay tuned for more of these videos because I will go into the control panel, maybe a video on how I expanded my IO and how I'm using my hybrid scenario here with some of the new analog gear, maybe one other video on something else. Let me know what you would like to see down in the comments and yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks.